Let's talk quickly about cognitive dissonance. When your mind knows something and your heart believes something else, when you're holding two conflicting ideas and ideals at the same time, and somehow you're bouncing back and forth between the two and confused. My name is Lise Colucci and I'm here to help you understand and heal from toxic people and narcissists in your life. So I'm gonna post a link to trauma bonding videos and cognitive dissonance videos so that you can get more detail. But what I wanna talk about here is something that happens with cognitive dissonance and why it happens. The feeling that you can't trust your mind. Okay, our mind is not one thing. We don't make up our mind and that's it. We are not so singular and so focused that we don't have a whole spectrum of color and variety and choice and options, okay? Our minds are expansive and our minds can hold multitude of ideas at the same time. That is how we make judgments. That is how we make choice. That is how we even can decide what path to walk down or what job to take or what to do in life, okay? If it were so linear and so narrow, we would just be handed a card and we'd say, okay, and we'd go do the thing that's on the card, right? So this plasticity of our mind, this expansion of our mind can create all kinds of things. But one of the hard parts is it also allows for cognitive dissonance to take place, okay? So you see the good in people, you see the good in the narcissist, okay? Most of us see the good side sometimes, not all of us, okay? There are some toxic people that are so vile and and just plain old toxic that there's not a lot of good to see, okay? We're not talking about that right now. Right now we're talking about when you see the moments when they're good, even if it's only a moment. When you see that, your mind says if they can do that, they can always do that. They can choose to be nice. They can choose to treat me better. So therefore what? It's you that needs to make the changes so that they can be assisted in making the right choice, right? It's you that is waiting around for the toxic person to make the choices to change and be better, right? So it's excuse making that we're doing but at the same time, it's this beautiful place in us that it allows us to see the good in people and to see the positive and to see the potential in situations. It's necessary that we don't break that part of us because how else would you change careers or how else would you learn anything new if you didn't see potential? The problem is we are placing that potential in situations where we are trauma bonded. And what I mean here is that we are attached to a person who has repeatedly given us intermittent reinforcement, like us one minute, hate us the next, randomly all over the place, right? And our emotions are wrapped up in it. Our self-worth is wrapped up in it. And so we're using this powerful skill of assessment and discernment and having hope and having this belief that the potential we see could be a reality and we're placing it in the wrong place. So we have to learn to be discerning about where we place that magnificent skill that we have, okay? Because what happens is if you believe enough that the potential of that narcissistic person is there and that they can make changes and that they can do better, you're stuck in the dynamic with that narcissistic person. It is the truth of a healthy relationship is each person presents the healthiest part of themselves to the relationship to create or make a creationship with the other person, right? That benefits both, that benefits the relationship itself, that benefits the world around them. Okay. With a narcissist, because everything revolves around them, it's impossible. It's impossible because it can't because it can't be that. It has to be both people individually showing up at their best, right? Showing up, sometimes you're not at your best, you build it back up, some, and, and there's allowance for that in a healthy relationship. There is not allowance for it in a toxic relationship because everything is one-sided in a toxic relationship. All right, when you're wrapped up in that and your heart is saying, you know, your emotions, 
are tied up in what I was just describing, but your head sees the other part of what I'm describing. When you're wrapped up in that and your heart sees and feels the potential, right, that I was talking about, and your head sees and knows the truth about who that toxic person is, how are you supposed to listen at all? What are you supposed to listen to? Super confusing. You're not stupid. There is nothing wrong with you. This is a normal reaction to toxic relationships. The thing is, what I tell people is you have to follow the path of logic. You have to listen to the part of your brain that knows this person won't change. And if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong and I'm wrong. They haven't proven they're going to change. They haven't shown any change. And they're not actually showing any empathy. Okay? I'm not wrong here. And you have to hold on to that and listen to that in order to get through it. That is why we suggest making a list of all the toxic things that a person does so that you can come back and look at it and it's just a quick little cheat sheet to see, oh yeah, and to get that part of your brain activated again. It's not that we want you angry and hating and like, you know, reactive to the narcissistic person. What we want when we say that is for you to wake up that part of your brain and focus on the logical things that have gone on so that your heart can come on board and say, oh yeah, we don't want to be hurt like that anymore. I don't want that anymore. That hurts me. Okay, there are plenty of places and people and things to put my great positive attention on. I do not need to waste it on that toxic person. All right, so if you guys have any discussion you want to have about cognitive dissonance, leave me a comment in the comment section. We'll talk more on this topic, okay? The cognitive dissonance that you feel will keep you locked in behavioral and emotional patterns. So really understanding what's happening, sometimes that is really useful, okay? If you need coaching or group coaching or peer support for that, check out the information in the main description of every video. And I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.